Alright, what's going on guys? Today we're going to be playing the Oko Planeswalker deck and I'm happy to say that this actually is mostly intact. Unfortunately, I won't be able to say the same about the Rowan deck, but this is almost identical to uh, what I did in the Planeswalker upgrade video with a few exceptions. Of course, Oko, it, I can't ever get the Planeswalkers on Magic Online, as well as Oko's uh, Hospitality. I just put a second copy of Return of the Wild Speaker. Uh, put a fourth opt. We have four of these. I'm using the Exelon art because that's what I have. Uh, what else? Oh, I put a fourth Pixie. I also have Temples of Mystery uh, just because I had them. Different art. Some people might be triggered by that, but I had a couple of them, so I just threw them in because whatever. But yeah, for the most part, the same. There's nothing here that isn't in the Planeswalker deck upgrade video. It's just I had to replace those uh, Planeswalker deck cards with a few other things. Not too big of a deal. Let's just get into a game. Ah, Pioneer. Pioneer's fun. Standard. Open play. Let's go. All right. Got a game going. This is looking reasonable. We've got ramp into a Sphinx of Foresight. We've also got Sphinx of Foresight in our opening hand. So we get the scry three at the beginning. We've got two ops to try to find that third land. Um, yeah, seems pretty reasonable. If we get into a fifth land, we get to uh, beat down with the Sphinx while drawing cards with the keeper. So yeah, this is a very sort of beat down looking hand. Seems decent. We're going to keep. We are going to scry. Or I guess we technically reveal. We'll scry at the beginning of our turn. Pulling a plays a forest. And passes. We're going to scry three. Not a single land. I think we just want lands, right? I think we're just going to bottom these. I'm pressing bottom. What's going on here? Bottom? Just just go, just go to the bottom. I, I don't want any of you. Is it work? Oh, oh, nope. I don't know why that happened. Okay. It's just bottom. Okay, there we go. That took way longer than it should have. We drew another keeper. That's just opt. I mean, we could wait, but whatever. There's our land. Fantastic. We'll put that on top and draw it. And we will pass the turn. Magic Online has been a little bit more laggy than usual lately. I think it's because so many people are actually just playing Pioneer, which is awesome. Yeah, pretty cool. We draw Spectral Sailor. We play Paradise Druid. So this is setting us up for our turn. Three Sphinx of Foresight, which sounds pretty good to me. And that uh, Paradise Druid has Hexproof, so we don't have to worry about it being killed. And Opponent Plays a Swamp, so they do have, well, they potentially have removal spells. Uh, 1-1, one, one, Lifelink, Haste, sure. Opponent's playing three colors and all basics, which is always a little bit risky. But that's okay, Opponent hits us for one. They gain one, go to 21. Draw, Return of the Wild Speaker is pretty good. Let's just play the Sphinx. I guess we have to hope that it doesn't get killed because they are in black. But uh, yeah, we will pass the turn. Put a place D spark. Well, that's annoying. So there it goes, my Sphinx. Well, now we need another land for the keepers. It'd be nice to have something, you know, a little bit beefy in play. Opponent attacks for one. We're going to go to 18. They will go to 22. Draw a Wildborn Preserver. That's not terrible. We can play that, then play the Spectral Sailor. I think that might be the best choice. And technically they both have Flash, so we don't have to play them right now. So I think we're just going to pass. Make it look like we have nothing going on. And then uh, we can Flash in the Preserver. We can Flash in Sailor. Then pay one, make the Preserver a 3-3. Probably kill the opponent's creature if they attack with it. They play Vraskas? I don't even know what this does. Um... Minus two to put a token into play with Death Touch and, uh, basically Death Touch. And if it deals damage, it gets a counter. <laughs> All right. That's, uh, definitely annoying. They take it down, put a token into play. Now, do they attack? I certainly hope they do, and they do. Fantastic. And they're tapped out, so we don't have to worry about combat tricks. So we will pay two. Flash and the Preserver. Go to blockers and kill this thing. They'll still gain one though and go to 23. And then end of turn we'll play Spectral Sailor. That'll trigger the Preserver and we will pay one to put a plus one plus one counter on the Fox. Technically it's not a Fox, right? It's an Elf. Which is kind of lame. Looks like a Fox to me. Oh, uh, another Sphinx of Foresight. That's pretty good. So it can't attack with stuff on the ground. Hmm. It's kind of annoying. I think we'll go to combat, we'll ping that Vraska for one. 
So now if they create another token, then uh, it will die. And then that assassin, the token they have now, won't get a counter. That's how it works, right? Uh, yeah. Seems alright. Second main phase, we're just going to play this uh, Sphinx of Foresight. It'll trigger the Preserver, but we don't have any mana, so that's fine. And we'll pass the turn. So we've got a lot of power on the battlefield. It's just, you know, that touch is a pretty good deterrent. I don't want to attack into it. I think the best thing we could draw right now, though, probably is uh, a fifth land. If we can get a keeper in play, swing the Sphinx at the Vraska to kill it off, swing one at the opponent to draw a card. At that point, we would be in a pretty fantastic position. Opponent attacks for one. Uh, I don't think I want to trade the Preserver for it, even though it is going to get a plus one, plus one counter. Uh, I think I just take the one. A 2-2 two -two with that touch isn't like something I'm too terrified of. It's just obnoxious, but I'm happy that it's tapped. Being tapped is good. Quatli's Raptor, interesting, proliferate. So that's going to put a counter. Oh yeah, okay. So it's going to be a 3-3 three -three and Vrask is going to be big enough that she can produce a token and not die. So that's annoying. And that's exactly what they do. Hmm. Yeah, those tokens are obnoxious. Not super deadly, but definitely obnoxious. Oh, deadly for my creatures, not for me. At least not yet. So we get the scry. We're going to try to get that fifth land, and there it is. Fantastic. So we will put that in our hand. Put that in play. We will play Keeper of Fables now, so we can draw a card. Going to trigger Preserver, of course, but no mana. We will go to combat. We're going to kill off the Vraska with the uh, Spectral Sailor and hit the opponent for four. All right, Vraska down, opponent goes to 19, and we draw a card. We get another opt. All right, we've had plenty of those. So what are we doing next turn? I don't want to attack into those assassins, but we do have uh, Return of the Wild Speaker could draw us four cards, or it can make all of our stuff huge. Uh, but really, I don't want to, like, if it's not worth pumping all of our creatures if, I mean, they could just block the Preserver and the Keeper and kill both of them anyway. So I don't think it's really worth that. But drawing four sounds fun. Or just playing the Keeper and drawing two cards. Um, a Johnny. That's pretty good. So their creatures have Vigilance and they're going to gain three life per turn. Fortunately, our stuff's big enough that we can overcome that three life per turn, but it's kind of annoying. Oh, and they can attack. Okay, yeah. They can attack with those Assassins now and still have them up for blockers, so that's pretty good. So they're attacking with everything. I uh, don't know why they're attacking with the Raptor, but... They're tapped out, right? I don't have to worry about anything. So I think I'm just going to trade the fox and we'll also block this. This works for me. So raptor's down, fox is down, assassin's down, and we're looking pretty good on board. That's for sure. Pixie on top, don't need that. We'll bottom it and we get a land. Well, that's fine. Let's uh, let's just get power on the battlefield. I don't think they're going to be playing board sweepers. They've played a lot of creatures and stuff, so we'll play that. We will go to combat. Let's hit the Ajani for four. And I want to hit the opponent just so I can draw some cards. So we'll send one at the opponent. They'll go to 21. We draw two. Land. And Fairy Vandal. Fairy Vandal's pretty good. Uh, we're going to start building a big creature with that as well. So pretty good. I think next turn we'll kill the Ajani with Sphinx. We'll hit them for one again. Draw two more cards. Play the Fairy Vandal first, actually, so it gets a counter. And then we have, like, ops and stuff. Opponent gains 3 life. Goes to 24. They have a lot of life, but we have so much power that it doesn't matter too much. There's a murder, that sucks. Huh, yeah, so now what? Opponent passes. Oh, I should have played opt, shouldn't I? I forgot I had Paradise Druid. Huh. Alright, well, that's fine. We'll play Fairy Vandal. We will... I think we... Uh, do we go after a Johnny? Let's go after a Johnny, and I can trade the Paradise Druid at this point. I have enough mana, it doesn't matter. So if they trade, that's fine. A Johnny's gonna lose one, he'll gain it right back next turn. But then the board will be clear for these Keepers to start wailing away. No, opponent just lets a Johnny die. That works for me. And pass the turn. I could have played Opt to get a counter, but I can still do that. I can double Opt this turn. Draw two, get a counter on Fairy Vandal. Next turn, we can play Return of the Wild Speaker to draw tons of cards. Get another counter on the uh, Fairy Vandal. Healer's Hawk, sure. So I think we're stabilizing. I think we're pretty good here at this point. That Assassin's Token is still a no- oh. Well, it seems like an early concede. Opponent's at 24 life. But like next turn, we would scry. I would put that on bottom, draw that. Play the other opt. 
we would hit Paradise Druid. I would probably bottom that. Oh, and then get another land. But that allows us to scry again. And next turn, uh, and then we have Speaks of Foresight. Yeah, we're actually looking pretty good. Opponent conceded with 24 life, but I mean, Fairy Vandal was about to get massive. We we're going to start drawing tons of cards with the Keepers. Yeah, so we were set up pretty good there. So let's get into another game. All right, game two. Oh, this is, well, it's all right. I didn't see the Thornwood Falls. This is fine. We've got Spectral Sailor. We can opt for more lands. We have some control. It's fine. So we'll play Thornwood Falls. I don't think I'm going to play. Well, I guess I could have played spectral sailor yeah that probably would have been better well nothing like making a mistake on turn one uh point of plays vampire of the dire moon all right draw a four drop pretty good sphinx is nice so we're just gonna pass we'll play spectral sailor end of our opponent's turn or trade with this vampire if it looks like they're going aggressive cauldron familiar deal one gain one all right we go to 20 they go to 21 which is oven that goes really well with the uh the Cauldron Familiar, they can sacrifice the Familiar, get a token, then play it. What is it? Uh, sacrifice a food token. Yeah, it's pretty good. Those two together are pretty good. Uh, maybe I will. I'm feeling like there is a danger of too much lifelink and too much draining, so maybe we just trade. And that's fine. And we'll opt as well. Sphinx of Foresight. Do we need a second one? Not really. And we draw a land. That's good. And we draw another Keeper of Fables. I mean, we have a really good hand. We just need to get those lands. Uh, so we'll play that. We will gain a life. Go to 21. Pass the turn. Guessing at end of turn. Yep. They will sacrifice that. They will get a food token. Then on their turn, they can sacrifice. The f or they can just do it now. Yeah. It's pretty good, you know. It's janky. If you have one or the other, it's terrible. But if you get both of them, yeah, pretty good. Basically draining one for the rest of the game. And they attack for one. We're going to go to 19. And they pass. Great. Spectral Sailor. Um, we're just gonna play Sphinx of Foresight and start smashing, hopefully. Ideally we will uh we'll draw a land. And we do get the scry, so we'll scry, try to get a land, so it can get Keeper of Fables in. They sacrifice, get a food token. I assume they will return it right back. Yep. Drain for one. We go to 18, they go to 24. Put a plays Ayara. So now it's uh every single time any black creature enters the battlefield they drain for one um this does not turn off the abilities that's frogify so let's just scry spectral sailor not what we want there we go that was a very loud truck going by apologies uh i don't know loud trucks in rural ohio keeper of fables is uh gonna be pretty good here we're gonna attack for four but it's gonna go to 21. Yep, they take it, draw a card, there's another land, um, that's okay. So I think we just really need Frogify. Alright, they sacrifice their creature, so they play it, they drain for one, drain for two because of Ayara. It's pretty good, draining for two every single turn. Plus, you know, any other black creatures they play. Ayara's pretty good, I wanted to build a deck around her, I just haven't had time. Like Ayara with Midnight Reaper and stuff, ooh, Knight of the Ebon Legion, also really good. And they drain, so we're down to 14, they're at 24. I like my opponent's deck. The cauldron stuff is janky, but I do like Ayara. Uh, land, don't need a land. There's Frogify, fantastic. That turns off abilities. Um, yeah, so we're definitely, definitely going to play that on Ayara. We're gonna go to combat first though. Going to attack. Opponent blocks like that, that's fine. I'm assuming they're gonna sacrifice. Are they gonna draw? All right. So we're still going to deal four. They're going to go back to 20. Still haven't gotten them below their starting life total. And we draw another card. Well, we have lots of uh, control spells. That's great. We're definitely going to target Ayara. No more draining from that. So there's no more draining from that. And they didn't get a food took. Oh, no, they can. Right. They can sacrifice that in response. That makes sense. I was going to say that we turned off Ayara and they don't have a food token for the familiar. But now they have it. So that's annoying, but uh, at the end of the day, just getting rid of Yara was the only thing that mattered. So yeah, we'll get that. I think we just uh, locked down the knight as well. It's not that big. It's a one two, but they can pump it and it does get potentially very big. So we'll just lock it down, put it to sleep. It's uh, no longer going to be a problem. Pona is starting to, I was going to say they're starting to gas out. That's not true at all. They have six cards in hand. Yikes. Hey, there's a Bloodthirsty Arrow list. We have played that in the past in the Soren Vampire deck. Seems pretty good in this deck, actually, with the Familiar and Ayara and stuff. Uh, Pona passes. End of turn, we're going to play Spectral Sailor. Pass to our turn. We're going to scry more land. We're going to put that on bottom. 
There's a pixie, which is kind of more land, but not exactly. I think it'd be worth it to uh, put the vampire to sleep, but I think we will attack first and see if they block. If they want to just sacrifice it, that's fine. So they block the Spectral Sailor, that's fine, because we'll still draw from the Sphinx of Foresight. I'm basically willing to trade the Spectral Sailor for a card. Uh, I guess it wasn't really worth it, was it? I should have held the Spectral Sailor back, but that's fine. Whatever. Whatever. We're drawing enough cards. Especially when we get this other Keeper of Fables in play. Yeah, they sacrifice and return and all that. Spectral Sailor down, we're gonna draw a card. Charm Sleep on the Vampire. And we'll go ahead and play this Pixie as well. So next turn, uh, opponent's not gonna have any flyers. There are not enough flyers to block both creatures, probably. At which point we can... Ooh, Revenge of Ravens is gonna be tough. Yikes. Well, we're gonna play Keeper of Fables and we're gonna draw two, but not good for us. Alright, Scry. Wildborn Preserver is pretty good. Yeah, I guess we can. It's it's a good card, so whatever. We're gonna play Keeper of Fables pre-combat so we can get that card draw. Go to combat. Attack with these. I don't want to attack with the uh, fairy now because they're gonna drain for one anyway, so it's basically only dealing one damage and I'm so low on life that it's not great to uh, take damage from that. But opponent's gonna get a 20 from... Raven thing, Revenge of Ravens, they block. Maybe I should be attacking with the Keeper of Fables actually, since they're gonna be blocking anyway. Well, we hit with these Sphinx, we draw two. Opponent gets their Cauldron Familiar back, yep. Let's see what we draw, Temple of Mystery and Opt. Well, at least we can, you know, dig around and stuff. Let's play the Temple. Scry one, Fairy Vandal. Um, a Flyer is nice, but I'm worried about the Revenge of Ravens. And if it's not going to be big enough in time, we're just going to bottom it. Pass the turn. Another Revenge of Ravens. How do we... I think that might be death. I don't know how we get through that. We're going to scry, draw, see what's going on. Nope, don't want to land. Paradise Druid, kind of a land. Play this Wildborn Preserver, end of turn. Scry. Fairy Vandal again. Mm. It's just, it's so slow right now. It's because of the Revenge of Ravens. It's not going to get big enough in time for it to matter. But it is a flyer, so I'll just take it because I need to ensure that I'm dealing damage and not getting chump blocked at this point. We'll play it. I think we just pay everything, put a bunch of counters on Wildborn Preserver, make it massive. So now we can attack with everything and they're going to take 12 no matter what. If they chump block the Wildborn Preserver, so I think we do that. But we are, now we're just dead. We're just dead. I didn't even realize that. We're just dead. Revenge of Ravens is just too good. I mean, even if I didn't attack with everything, attacking for four and then being drained two, so losing two and then gaining two, means that ultimately we're both taking two damage. So it doesn't even matter. Yep. Yep. And then they're just kind of sacrifice. Yep. Okay. Well, that was nice. Revenge of Ravens, pretty good. And uh, I mean, what can you do? Two, two Revenge of Ravens on the battlefield is pretty tough to attack into. Pretty good card if you're playing against creature decks. So we lose. Fantastic. All right, let's just get into another game. Game three. Well, that is a lot of Spectral Sailors. Um, I mean, it's fine. We do have uh, opt to scry and stuff. So yeah, whatever. Pona plays a swamp. Pona pass. Well, we draw another land. All right, we're just going to pass. We'll play this uh, Spectral Sailor. One of these Spectral Sailors at end of turn. Opponent plays Evolving Wilds, sure. Cracks it, gets the planes, and opponent passes. We'll play Spectral Sailor, end of turn. Draw a Paradise Druid. Not bad, not bad. We will go to combat. We will attack for one. Opponent goes to 19, second main phase. We're going to play Paradise Druid. Opponent's getting salty in chat. They're angry that I'm playing Spectral Sailor. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. Never seen anyone angry about seeing a Spectral Sailor. It's not exactly the most powerful card ever, but uh, sure. Open playroom, people tend to get angry and they don't do anything. All right, so we're just gonna play this uh, Sphinx that we just drew, that's pretty fantastic. Actually, we'll go to combat first. We will attack for one, see if they have a removal spell. I don't wanna play Sphinx's Foresight and have it be killed instantly, whereas, maybe, okay, they don't play a removal spell anyway. So we'll just throw this Sphinx out, see if it lives. There's a chance that it won't. Yep, here it goes. Yeah, okay. Well, that was uh, kind of expected, but that's okay. Not okay. That was a really good card. Really wanted to keep it. Embodiment of Agonies, which is also a pretty good card. Not exactly something you want to play this early in the game, but it's a 1-1 one, one flyer. Not too threatening. There is a Thornwood Falls. We'll just play that. Gain a life. I think we go to combat and 
Let's just attack for one, see if they want to trade. It'd be fantastic if they did. But they don't. That's fine. All of our stuff has flash or it's an instant, so we'll just pass and play stuff later. Maybe they'll attack with that embodiment of agonies and I'll kill it with the spectral sailor. Ah, oh, they didn't attack. Oh, that would have been so good. Then the opponent would have had a reason to... Oh, wait, I tapped wrong. Uh, then the opponent would have had a reason to be angry at Spectral Sailor, but hey, whatever. Play Spectral Sailors and pass. Yes, Keeper of Fables. That is what I want to see. Fantastic. We'll play that. Four or five. We have lots of flyers. We're going to start drawing cards. Pretty great. Let's attack with all of these. We'll plan to play uh, Opt uh, end of our opponent's turn or something. Put it does block. Fantastic. We draw a card. Another Paradise Druid. That's fine. Pass the turn. Uh, Seraph of the Scales is pretty good. 4-3 Flyer is pretty good. We're going to uh, play Opt, Scry, and draw end of turn. Sphinx of Foresight. Fantastic. We'll take that. Pass to our turn. Draw a Pixie. So, is it worth sacrificing a Spectral Sailor just to draw a card? I think so. I'm willing to sacrifice a Spectral Sailor at this point. Don't chump block one. That's fine. One will hit just to draw a card. We'll draw a land, right? No, ooh, pretty good. Second main phase, we will play Sphinx of Foresight. And we will play the Pixie. And next turn, we can either draw four with the Return of the Wild Speaker or give all of our creatures plus three, plus three, which would be pretty devastating. Um, probably not deadly. Well, maybe, I don't know. Conclave Tribunal. Taking the Sphinx. How dare you? So if we play... Return of the Wild Speaker. They will block Keeper and we'll deal, what, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, we have lethal. We have lethal and they're tapped out. Poon is still being super salty in the, in the, in the chat. Oh man, I don't know. Seems silly. Why be angry? We're just gonna play Wild Speaker thing. Return of the Wild Speaker and, uh, win the game? Yep. Gonna win the game. The best they can do is block Keeper of Fables. They still take 14 exactly. Poon is just getting super salty. <laughs> I don't know. I want to concede, we're just going to get to, uh, let's just get to the lobby. So here we are, guys. Um, yeah, that was pretty good. We lost one match. We lost to Revenge of Ravens, basically. That was the card that killed us. We just couldn't attack into Revenge of Ravens. Uh, Sphinx of Foresight, fantastic as always. I just can't recommend this card enough. Fairy Vandal, um, it's just, it's a little clunky. I did say in the deck tech that I, I didn't know if it was worth, you know, focusing on this draw aspect. It didn't really do anything in any of our games. We never really had it. Um, obviously it can, you know, do well over time, but it just, it never got to that point. Uh, Return of the Wild Speaker, fantastic. Uh, surprisingly good. I didn't expect it to be that good. Wild Board Preserver seemed pretty good. We never really got to see it just because the one time we drew it, it was in that Revenge of Ravens game. But man, it can just get massive. It's a really nice mana sink. And the two mana, two, two with flash. Being able to flash it in and kill off a small creature, kind of great. So yeah, I think this card is also underrated. Very cheap. So yeah, I think this deck has some really good cards in it. Some like really cheap, underpriced in my opinion cards like Wildborn Preserver and Sphinx of Foresight. And uh, you know, Frogify isn't the best removal spell ever, but it works. And uh, I actually enjoyed playing this deck. So yeah, there you go, guys. That's the Oko deck. Hopefully it gives you an idea of how this deck plays when you've upgraded it to something similar to my list. And uh... Yeah, there you go. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.